What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to import SketchUp files into Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so there's a lot of reasons you might import SketchUp files to Rhino. So there's a lot of like 3D warehouse files that people might use, or you might get different models from different people um, in SketchUp and you wanna bring them into Rhino for various reasons. I wanna take a look at some of the uh, importing options that we have for bringing files into Rhino. All right, so let's say we wanted to import this SketchUp file into Rhino. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do a file import. We're probably gonna do this a couple times so I can show you a couple of the different options. So first off, you're gonna go find the SketchUp file that you wanna import. You're gonna click on open. When you click on open, what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up this window right here that's gonna give you a number of different options. And so first off, let's take a look at this first option. So if you click on this, notice how you make it this error message right here. Basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna try to convert the meshes in the SketchUp file to those editable uh, NURBS poly surfaces in Rhino. Um, generally speaking, I'm trying not to do that just because that's a lot of data and there can be a lot of that inside of the SketchUp file. I would say you probably want to limit that to kind of the smaller surfaces or something like that. So if you have a surface you want to edit, you might just want to save that as a separate SketchUp file and then just import that. Um, so the next option is the import curves. And so right now, if we uncheck the box for import curves, and remember that we're bringing this file in right here, but if we uncheck the box and click on OK and import this, what it's going to do is it's going to bring this in, but it's not going to bring in um, the edges that were over here, right? So it brought in my default model, it brought in these meshes right here, but it did not bring in those edges that were in the SketchUp file, right? So those are just in here as individual edges in SketchUp. And since we didn't have the curves function checked, what it did is it brought this in without those. However, if you were to do this again, so let's just do a new import, we're going to do a file, import and under options we check the box for import curves what that's going to do is that's going to bring this in and it's going to have the uh, those edges that are in here so it's going to have that arc that we drew in SketchUp and then the pair of edges and those are actually going to be editable so notice how now those are actually brought in um, notice how this set of edges was converted to a curve in Rhino so it's not just a series of edges, it's actually brought in as like a uh, open curve object, meaning it's got control points in here. Same thing with this arc right here. Notice how this gets brought in with control points so that you can still edit the location of the arc inside of Rhino. All right, and so if we run this again, but this time we pay a little bit more attention to the options down below. Notice how there's an option on here for join on import and you can join your edges and your faces. Um, you can also set the weld angle in here, which we're not gonna talk too much about in this video, but specifically I wanna focus on the edges and faces. So if you don't check this box right here when you bring this in, right? So um, if I bring this in like this, then remember how before it joined those curves together and they were more in here as like polylines, right? Well now, instead, those are in here as individual items that aren't necessarily connected to the other objects. So if I move this around, right, notice how it's not affecting the rest of this object. So if you want these to come in as individual pieces, then you can uncheck that option for join together. Generally speaking, I think you're gonna wanna leave it joined. So in addition, notice how on this surface right here, you've got a similar problem where it brought these faces in, but it brought them in and it didn't join them in as a singular object. It brought them in as individual meshes like this. So again, kind of depends on what you're trying to do, but in general, when you do that import right here, um, you're going to want to check the box for join on import edges and faces. So one other thing I wanna point out is when you do the import, let's take a look at the way this handles textures. So right now, for example, if I open this, there's an option in here for embed textures in the model and use the SketchUp Texture Writer to create textures. Um, I go ahead and check that one. I'm not 100% sure what that one affects, but the other one, I wanna make a note that there's an option either to embed the textures in the model or not. And so right now, for example, if we were to import this file and we didn't check the box and we click on OK, when we import this, what that's going to do is that's going to export those textures to an external file, right? So, and I'm gonna switch this over to rendered view right here. So you can see how the textures are still here, right? They get applied to your model. But what's gonna happen is if you go into that folder where your import came from, what it's gonna do is it's gonna export those texture images to a separate folder like this. So if we look at this, you can see how this is the different images that were in here. However, if we don't do that, 
right? If instead we do a new and we import this, but this time we do a file import and I'm going to delete this folder. But if we import this and we click on the option for embed textures in the model, it's going to bring over that model with the textures actually contained inside of that file. So if we zoom in, look at this in rendered mode right here, notice how the textures are applied in here. But if we go back into that folder, notice how there's no texture image files. So if you don't check that box, then it's basically going to embed the textures inside of the Rhino file itself rather than that separate folder. So it really depends on if you want to have external access to those material map files or not, in my opinion. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about importing SketchUp files into Rhino. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.